Oop, I would like to refuel my Cipollini. This is Tour of Norway stage four. Long stage, like 230 Ks. Not too much happened in it. Breakaway went with Shane Archibald, the only world tour rider represented, world tour team represented for Bora Hansgrohe, and it finished with this circuit. And what was notable about this circuit, it was a flat sprint finish, was this 1500 meter 5% climb, but it had a steep section in it at crest about 5Ks from the finish. And so they did a one lap of the finish line, then they'll come back and do it again. They did the climb twice. Not big teams here, as in number of riders on each team. Not huge numbers for lead outs. And with the climb, that's going to complicate things even further, thinning out, you know, potential lead out riders. And so, and Ineos didn't take it up either for Hater. They didn't really pace the climb. Um, not sure why. Maybe they just were tired from yesterday, or maybe they thought they had, had a good chance or a better chance with the lead out for the sprint proper possible as well. You know X with the team to take it up. For Tobias Johannesson, no longer the enemy, no longer. Trying to create some sort of split, I presume, for him for his GC. He lost a lot of time on the climb yesterday. He's like over a minute behind Evenepoel, but Evenepoel in the leader's jersey, second wheel behind the blue jersey of Johannesson, was right there, and so nothing happened. And even like Pedersen, I think, was fourth wheel there, the Trek rider. So none of the major sprinters like Christoph, Pedersen, Vernon, uh, Haller, who's going for Bora, got dropped. Hater obviously didn't get dropped. Uh, this is his bread and butter, these sort of climbs, even though Johannesson kicked again. But wasn't to be. Three Ks left. Who's here? Who's got a lead out? Who has teammates? And Intermarche have a few numbers, but Jumbo Visma pretty much had the most. They have Rosen there as well in Dutch National Champs kit. You can't tell he's a Jumbo rider because it's a different jersey. And they go to the front. Trees get in the way. Trees obviously should be should be banned for getting in the way of my aerial shots. And they let the wheel go. But I think it's Turnison lets Van Hoydonks will go through this corner. And this reminds me so much of the stage Grand Thomas one of the Criterium de Dauphiné last year, where there's a late climb that messes up the lead outs. And you see Ineos got one guy, maybe it's at Sheffield or Amador, and he's looking at, at Hayter, is it? Uh, or the other Ineos are thinking, oh, do we really want to go now? And it's Intermarche who start, uh, well, not a lead out, start chasing. And Van Hooyok super strong this year as well. Incredible year so far for Yumbo. And like Thomas, who good on the flat in the Dauphiné last year, and Bahrain couldn't bring it back last year in the Dauphiné, and it was similar difficulties for the other teams here. They were able to. Bora moved to the front with Schelling for Haller. We have Trek leading out for Pedersen here. Looks like Sheffield for Hayter on the left-hand side. Prades for Kaha, who had that unfortunate crash in the International Tour of Hellas the other week. Vernon's here for Quick Step, as well as Christoph out of picture for Intermarche. He had Petit here, I think, but there wasn't really much of a lead out for anybody in the final 500 metres of this stage. And there was two big left-hand corners, and I want you to take note of the Bardiani rider, Fiorelli, in the purple. They got this SO petrol station to the left-hand side, and he's just going to swing through the station as Tyus Paul, and then the quick step rider follows him, and you look at the Yumbo riders going a bit wider, and I think they also went off the road as well, so I don't know, it wasn't barriered, so the riders are going to do what the riders are going to do, just funny that Fiorelli is literally like riding through a petrol station, like if he's seen like a car's about to pull up and put petrol in, he's like, nah, not going to do it, but no cars, I'm, I'm going in, and then he sort of, he nips ahead of Turnison as well through this corner, kind of the reverse of what Cohen Bowman did to Schmidt in the Giro d'Italia finish, uh, today, which I have my thoughts on that in the Lantern Rouge cycling podcast. A little bit controversial. Go and check out that recap of the Giro d'Italia stage. But here we have Hater. I feel like Hater is going to be kicking himself because he, I think it might have been Tailwind, not entirely sure. And he comes with really good momentum with this group that's idling because, as I said, now three times, there's no lead outs, but then he stops. He stops and then he gets swarmed by eventual race winners and podium places, Christoph Vernon and Haller. And, I mean, he drops his chain as well, which is a material problem later. But I feel like if he kicked there, and he has kicked early before, sometimes too early. I think he kicked early with, like, MVDP on the wheel and set him on and maybe this year. But he allows himself to kind of get swarmed. Then Haller swings across. Vernon's trying to get up to speed. Christoph is in his wheel. But Haller just had the perfect timing, perfect jump. And maybe the legs of a pure sprinter like Vernon were a little bit dulled by that late climb in this stage. Haller taking the win. You'll see better in this close-up. Uh, when Haller goes across and then Vernon sort of swings onto him, uh, Hater has to check his sprint a little bit. And then when he restarts pedaling, he it looks like he snaps his chain right there as a mechanical. So that was his sprint done anyway, but it was already 
not a not a great position he was he was going from when he sort of had to check his or not check his sprint stop with 250 meters to go so Halla takes the win huge win for him hasn't won since 2015 which was in Norway a GC at Tour de Fjords and that was seven years ago like so his whole prime from 24 to 31 years old he hasn't won a race Schelling did a great job for him in the final circuit he was on Bahrain last year incredible classics rider there they had a disappointing classics this year they were using him as a domestique really early in, in races for Pollitt which didn't agree with but anyway he looks good in this stage at least and his sprint looks good so maybe in the Belgian semi-classics will go well later in the year Avonapol is still on top in GC 46 seconds ahead of Vine 124 ahead of Plapp Ineos got two more chances to overturn or up in this race with the two stages remaining. They do have the probably the best team overall to do that. Vine will be hoping to hang on. Avon Apol will be looking to defend or maybe some late attacks or some lead outs of Vernon on the last stage. Who knows? Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you with a recap of the stages on the weekend. Ciao.